Hey, what's going on? It's Doug Cunnington here, and hopefully you're able to hear me, so you could let us know in the chat there. I am excited to bring on my guest for today, my friend Alex Cooper from WP Eagle, and he's going to uh, tell us a bunch of cool stuff about things he's working on and just share some stories. We haven't caught up in a little while, so... I think there's a lot of stuff going on in the world we could actually talk about too. So I'm going to bring them on right now. This It's the first time I'm using this specific tool and I actually just hung up on Alex. But hopefully this is going to work for us here. Alex, what's going on? I'm here. Hello. It's good. I'm good. All is well. And, and the technology is working. Perfect. It's uh, it's amazing when it works out, and I guess we'll just wait to make sure that people can hear you as well. They can hear me for sure. I'm going to give a, a shout out to a couple of the folks like John and Helen, Adrian, who hopped on early. We have the mastermind, and we're just going to chat and catch up. So we haven't talked in quite a while since I think the last live stream, and then um, we'll answer some questions. So yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Couple things that are top of mind for me right now, just you know, current events in the world uh, around here. We're about to go back into some lockdown and stay-at-home situation. How is it in your neck of the woods? Yeah, we're locked down already over here. Um, <laughs> although it's not been the same as last time. I mean, the first time was a proper lockdown, wasn't it? And the schools were closed, so you know we were doing homeschooling, and and that so that was a big shift, and and everyone was a little bit more wary of everything you know you, you wouldn't touch the parcels you got from amazon you'd leave them on the porch for a couple of days before you'd even go near them but this time everyone seems a bit more relaxed the schools are still open um but they basically just shut all the pubs that's the main thing they've done <laughs> which is obviously bad times really yeah it's uh i think we have like one or two days but I was chatting with a friend who I was actually supposed to hang out with tomorrow who lives pretty close by. And he was like, oh, bit of a scare. I'm going to have to cancel. I was exposed to someone who tested positive like last week. And he said he feels fine, but he has to get tested and then quarantine and all that stuff. So yeah. it's definitely sort of hitting more and more people. So anyway, people stay uh, we, safe. We have an there. app. Do you have an app? We have an app. So um your phone is supposed to, you know, talk to other phones that are nearby. And then if they get a te positive test, your phone alerts you and then you have to self isolate. And if you go to any restaurants or anywhere, you, there's like a, a, a code you scan as you go in. And I don't think it works probably, but that's, that's the idea anyway. <laughs> okay. It's government, the government made obviously. So it's, it's not going to be that great, but yeah, I, yeah. I, was I, I don't know. Say... When, um, there, there is a vaccine allegedly on the way. So maybe that's going to be the end of it. I don't know. Yeah, I was just watching like uh, one of Joe Rogan's guests talk about it, and um, yeah, I'm like, ah, I don't know. We're you know we're lucky enough, you and I and my wife, to work from home, so we have a lot of flexibility. So, um, you know, we're just continuing to stay home, and you know, we were actually visiting with you know friends occasionally, with uh, like e even out at restaurants, usually outdoors and stuff like that. But anyway, yeah, yeah we did that as well. But that seems to have all gone now. In fact, the, the rules are weird here because you can, when it, uh, when we kind of unlock a bit and people can go back out again, you can go to restaurants and bars and things, but you still can't meet friends and family in your own garden. <laughs> I don't know. It, they're basically, they're, they're, the government is stuck between trying to keep the economy going and not overwhelm the healthcare system. That's kind of the, the balancing act they're trying to do, isn't it? Right. I, and I was, and then we'll, we'll move on and talk about marketing everybody, but it's interesting, you know, <laughs> how different places are handling it. I was reading just before we started the new rules and they had like a yellow, orange, red system, and now they've added a purple. So there's like basically what you're saying. You can't gather personally, right? I can't go over to my neighbors next door, but I can go to a, a restaurant where I can sit outside. So just what you said. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. And that's weird. So they started with like a traffic light system and then they thought, oh, okay, we need another color. Let's go with purple. That, that'll work. Purple. Yeah. yeah. Funny enough. Okay. <laughs> You're not quite so, sure whether purple is a good color or a bad color. I guess it's, it's bad. Not, yeah. I think yeah. I was like, oh, purple. Great. Like we have, uh, you know, something better. Maybe there's a blue on the other side of that. Uh, thinking of the color wheel here, but okay, yeah. we, we can move on to normal stuff. Now, I'm not going to bury our uh, promotions and stuff at the very end. So I I think most people know you here, but Alex, you have a YouTube channel. 
um, people could check out your channel. What's some of the, the newest videos, some stuff that you're excited about that you just want to plug right now? Okay. Um, well, I did a video on Monday, which was quite interesting. I was basically looking into um, whether short content ranks, and I know that you've done some stuff on this as well, but um, I did a, a very short post um, because basically this is around my case study site, which is bestroofbox.com. I know a number of you know who, what site it is. And I created a post around a car, the Acura, Acura. I never know how to say it. We don't have Acuras over here. I think they're like Hondas, aren't they? Yeah, um, Acura. Around the Acura. Acura RDX. And I literally added 200 words of content. And then I filled out the rest of the article with um, AAWP content. Um, so a table and some other product boxes. And yeah, that's got, uh, I think position free on the first page of Google for the term Acura RDX roof box. So I did a video around that and just having a look at whether short content can rank. And from what I can see, providing you target some keywords that aren't too competitive, you know, go for longer tail keywords, four or five uh, words or more, um, you can rank um, with without writing, you know, two, three thousand words. You can do it with, with maybe less than a thousand words. Very cool. And how long ago did you publish that post? Um, it must be maybe two months old, something like that. Maybe, maybe even less than that. Quite, quite recently. Right. What was your experience with short content? Basically, what you said. If it can help the visitor, if it is a long tail query, not too competitive, it's going to do okay. I know. Yeah. Actually, I was reviewing someone's site recently, and they had extremely long form where most of the content was, you know, eight to 10,000 words. And it's almost, it's almost too much, too it's much, almost yeah. too long. So, um, I, I think with the right, with the right keyword, it's probably going to work out pretty well. And I, I'm curious. Yeah, like it's a very quickly. focused keyword. I mean, I think the problem is, is when you go to write long content, what can happen is you can deviate away from the actual topic of the article, you know, around what the actual thing is, because, you know, if I'm writing about a particular car and the roof boxes that can fit on that car there's not too much to say I, you know do a couple of paragraphs about you know this is the car it's a great car but it's got limited space and you need to be aware of these things and then you know here's four or five roof boxes that'd be perfect for it there's, there's not much more to say yeah i think you're 100 percent right with that and yeah if you make it too long it's too fluffy maybe you end up with a lot of fluff in the article an intro that's too long you're just rambling Kind of like what yeah, you're and you're now. trying to fill it out, and then you can go off into other tangents that are, that are relevant. And I think what can happen then is you can confuse Google a little bit because Google comes in and looks at the first bit and goes, "Okay, it's about this," and then it, it continues to crawl, and then it's getting all this other stuff, and it's thinking, "Okay, well, is it about this or is it about that?" And you're just kind of diluting what the actual article's about. So, I mean, because it's a question I get all the time, I'm sure you do all the time as well. Um, people asking, "How long should my content be? <laughs> How many words does it need to be to rank?" and I think the answer is, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> it does depend. As short as you can make it, usually, is what yeah. I am yeah. aiming towards now. Especially thinking of YouTube and, you know, there's classic advice on, you know, at the beginning it was have short videos and then it was have longer videos. Those tend to rank better. You'll get longer watch time. And at this point, I usually either do long interviews like this or I'll, I'll make a video basically as short as I can, even if it's only three minutes long. So Yeah. There was like a rule with YouTube that, you know, you needed to have a video that was at least 10 minutes because then you'd be eligible for some extra ad uh, playment. I think it's eight minutes now, isn't it? Then you can add the mid-rolls, I think. That's right. That's so, right. Um, but yeah, I think, again, you should just create content. Content should be as long as it needs to be to fulfill whatever the content is about. And what I like to say is, if you're unsure, if you don't have like empirical data or any, anything to go off of, just think about the end user. Think about the visitor on your website, the YouTube viewer, what's best for them. If you just remove the SEO nonsense and the algorithm that you're trying to figure out and just publish the best content for the visitor, that's, that's probably the best thing to do. So, I was gonna actually ask you about YouTube content. I noticed that you've been clipping up some of your longer videos. Um, is that, uh, is that getting a good response from the couple of comments that I saw on your video? People seem to like that because, again, you're cutting out the waffle, as uh, Helen had just said in the in the chat. That's what we call it over here, the waffle. I know you, you have waffles for breakfast, but, um, yeah. Um, 
Like, how how are you? How's your audience responding to that? Or are they saying that you're just regurgitating stuff? You lazy dog. Why don't you create some new content? Well, yeah, that's the great part. Is about fifty percent say you're lazy. I've already watched this. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> and then the other half think it's the greatest thing in the world. They get to see the their favorite stuff again if they want to or yeah. if they weren't able to invest 45 minutes or an hour into the original interview they'll go ahead yeah. and, and watch the tight clip just the topics they're into so you and i tested this stuff, yeah yeah exactly and i tested this um, for a long time and then stopped publishing any clips and then turned them back on so once you zoom out you can i can see the data there's more watch time, there's more views. So it's for the people that want it. And I thought about creating another channel. You and I may have talked about this before. Oh, like clip I heard, yeah, you were talking, I think you were talking to someone else about Eclipse channel, yeah. Yeah, and the, the problem is I am just a humble, small YouTuber. So if I created another channel, there'd be about 200 people that would, <laughs> would have a look at it. And basically um, fewer people would actually see it and it would kind of spread the resources too thin. So do you have any experience with that or any, any tips? No, but it's something I have thought about, again, because it's a way to get content out quickly. But for example, on a stream like this where, uh, you know, I do my live stream every week um, or a couple of live streams a week now, um, there is often good stuff that happens within those streams. Um, and I, I just, I know that people do watch the streams back. I'm not a big fan of watching a live stream back. I think it's better to be there when it's live and get involved in the chat and everything. But yeah, I was thinking that maybe I should go back through the live streams um, or at least like the day after that I do a live stream, go through it and just cut some of the best bits out. And one thing that I may do, depending on how good of a guest you are here, Alex, so a little pressure <laughs> on you, but I love obviously repurposing content. So a lot of people I see in the chat are saying, you know what? on YouTube, I'm not gonna watch this long of an interview. I do a podcast as well. So this is all fair game. So as long as we don't talk about visuals, as long as we're not talking about video that we're watching, this will pretty much stand up in a podcast. So yeah. I'll, I'll repurpose it, I can clip it up, I could take a specific segment and uh, talk about that, for example, so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure with the longer interviews, a lot of people do just listen to them because there's not a lot to watch is there really there's just two faces on a screen talking so uh, it's the kind of thing that you can just put on in the background while you're working away on something isn't it yeah and i mean i, I gotta say we gotta give ourselves more credit we're just not two faces you know talking to each <laughs> other we're handsome devils over here i know i mean i wouldn't want to watch this <laughs> yeah i almost shaved for this interview today but then i decided <laughs> not to so no well fair enough save the environment <laughs> <laughs> so um, one thing I want to get an update on, so I, I think you have two public case studies out there. You mentioned one, the best roof box, and you have sort of a newer site. Can you just kind of give us a high level overview? What, what are those sites doing right now? What are you excited okay. working on and everything? Yeah, so best roof box is doing well. Uh, I say I'm still adding lots of content around cars. Um, I actually published a video on my other channel. I do have another channel as well, which is where I like to just kind of vlog i tend to not edit the videos just kind of brain dump stuff but um i've learned a lesson because on best roof box i got really excited i thought what i'm going to do is i'm going to create content around every single type of car that's available in america i'm going to write articles around roof box of that and i i got a big list of um cars that are available in the us and i briefed up my writers and said you know i want articles around this and i didn't really think it through properly and i'm i'm always quite bad at this like jumping in with two feet in fact that's what my video is called that I put up on the channel um so they were writing articles around cars like um sports cars and pickup trucks which don't tend to lend themselves very well to having a roof box i guess you don't see many pickup trucks with roof boxes because they've already got tons of space anyway they're a pickup truck and sports cars you don't really want to put a roof box on your sports car although saying that sports cars generally have a very small boot as you call a trunk i think um but um so yeah we i ended up publishing quite a few articles around cars and trucks and stuff that again ranked really well on google um but get no traffic because people just simply aren't looking um for a roof box for those particular makes and models so i've learned a lesson there, but i'm still very excited about roof box it's still doing four figures a month uh, i recently switched over to ezoic um and that has really boosted the ad side of the um the earnings you know i've been 
kind of very wary of Ezoic. But I've got to say, they held my hand and we got it up and running and we've been back and forth. There was a couple of little issues, but they've all been resolved. The site seems quick. Um, it doesn't look too messy. I mean, it's got quite a few ads on it, but it's, it looks fine. And yeah, the earnings have definitely increased quite considerably. So that's exciting. And um, my other site is called Wheel Along, which is a UK targeted site. Originally, the idea was to focus it on wheelbarrows, which is quite specific. Um, but then as I dug into it further, um, I basically saw that on Amazon, there's all sorts of different trolleys you can get. You can get sack barrows, you can get pallet trolleys, you can get shopping trolleys. There's, so it's basically going to be a site around anything with wheels, basically, any kind of trolley that you use to move stuff, including wheelbarrows. So yeah, that's filling out quite nicely. It's already generated a few Amazon sales um one of them was very interesting i'm not going to mention what that was but i did a video on that as well if you want to see what some people order on amazon it's quite bizarre <laughs> kinky some would say and um yeah it's starting to develop um a little bit of traffic it's still in the sandbox i'm pretty sure of that but there's a couple of articles that are getting a little bit of traction so yeah that's quite exciting very cool and you uh, gave me a window here to plug Ezoic and their site speed accelerator. They're a partial yeah. sponsor for these uh, live streams. So thanks to Ezoic and the site stream site speed accelerator will help your site load faster. So do check it out. There's a link in the description. And I know Alex, you and I had talked um, off the record a while back and I was like, Hey, check out Ezoic. You may want to uh, have a look and I'm glad that you did check them out. So can you tell us a little bit about the experience of like integrating your site with Ezoic? I know there were a couple hiccups, but any highlights that you want to mention here? Yeah, I mean, people? it was easy to switch over. You literally just update your DNS settings, um, which is, is, is fairly straightforward. Um, and then um, they only turn on the ads when you're ready and you can decide whether you want them on, on all the pages or you want them on certain pages. So I haven't put any ads on my homepage. I was quite specific about that. I didn't want any ads on the homepage. Um, and also on my category pages, I'm not put ads on there too, but on the content there is ads. Um, and then, yeah, we use the site speed accelerator. The thing that caused the, a couple of issues was the site speed accelerator, but that was purely because we kind of put it on and then we cranked it up to a hundred or cranked it up to 11. And like all of these speed optimization plugins like WP Rocket, WP Fastest Cache, all of those plugins that you use to speed up your site, they can break stuff. It's just the way they, they, they sometimes work because you know, they're, they're doing stuff to the JavaScript, they're doing stuff to the CSS. Um, so it was just a case of just kind of turning off a few things, working out what was the issues. And uh, I'm actually, I'm still working with Ezoic at the moment to to kind of get a really good um, speed. Although the site does feel fast, it's just that Google page speed score, which I think we all get a little bit too obsessed with that thing um, because I don't think it's actually a true indication of how fast the site is. It's, it's, it's a whole host of other stuff, isn't it? So. The site feels fast, but yeah, the whole transition was was good, and the, uh, the my account manager really really helpful, and yeah, can't complain. And I say the earnings is at least five times more than I was getting on AdSense, and I haven't even completed the first month yet. So we'll wait and see what what the end figure is at the end of the month. That's fantastic. Yep, and that's typically what I hear from people who switch over to Ezoic. A lot of times, the revenue goes up with basically the same amount of traffic, and it's interesting because I talk to people that are on AdThrive or Mediavine, and if they have a good relationship with their account manager, typically they don't want to move. So it's cool that you're finding a good experience with Ezoic and your account manager, and they help you out and help you work through the, the little issues. So pretty cool. Yeah. I heard an interesting anecdote about, I think it was Mediavine the other day, that um, they can be in, there can be an issue with them when you come to sell your site. They don't like you to transfer the Mediavine account to a new owner. So that can be an issue. That's just something I heard, but um, don't quote me on that. I've, I've <laughs> I don't heard think that's that a problem too. with Eric. Yeah. It's always a little funny when you're switching uh, any sort of monetization. Affiliate usually is pretty transparent, but with the display ads, sometimes you have to be accepted or be part of a network and blah, blah, blah. And sometimes, I don't know how it all works, but yeah, there's some... yeah. Weirdo. Uh, the mastermind actually got a question in the chat I see about Ezoic saying, can you control what type of ads can be displayed on your site with Ezoic? I don't know. <laughs> I've not looked into that. I'm not too worried about the ads, but um, 
what what kind of control would you want there the mastermind i mean i guess you wouldn't want competitors ads or something showing i don't know that's a good question i i don't know specifically but i think you can i think there's a way to sort of filter but i'm not 100 percent sure so we are alex and i are clearly not experts but that's a pretty good <laughs> question and i bet you can find it um pretty easily on the support and you know documentation there on ezoic or, or whatever network you're looking at by the way so yeah the thing is you're not gonna um the thing with ezoic is and that, that's what makes it so great and that's what gives you so much uh, extra revenue is that it uses a very complex machine learning uh system to show the best ads in the best places to the right people uh, and I guess if you start trying to manually mess with that, that's going to affect your earnings. So on Best Roofbox, a lot of the ads are obviously car related, um, but then also they're related to the person visiting the site via remarketing. So, you know, they'll be seeing ads on, you know, for stuff that they're they're interested in or that they've recently looked at. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to limit the ads unless there was, say, a, a big competitor or something showing ads on your site, then maybe you, you'd want to control that. But I don't know. And, and typically, not always, but typically the advertisers are more scared of having their ad shown on a website that has questionable information, yeah. right? So if you have drugs and other, um, say, sex toys all, all over your site or something like that, <laughs> um, then maybe like they don't want to have baby food um ads like showing up there weird example but i mean i thought of it on yeah the well slide. that was the whole kind of ad apocalypse on youtube a while back wasn't it where pewdiepie did something questionable in one of his videos and then suddenly all the advertisers didn't want to be associated with that at all and they just started pulling their ads off youtube and google had a big panic and now they're very uh, strict in terms of uh, where ads will show and you, when you upload a video now you have to basically tell Google exactly what's in that video, whether it's got anything questionable at all. Because, yeah, if you're talking about terrorism or being anti-Semitic in a video, a lot of brands don't want to be seen next to that. Indeed, indeed. And um, quick note, we are getting more questions, and so that's fantastic. Thanks, everyone, for doing that. And I got to give a shout-out to Niche Website Builders and other, another uh, underwriter of the show. You can save a little money. I actually have a, I'm trying, there's so much stuff on the screen right here, but I'm trying <laughs> to, face, yeah, right over our heads here. <laughs> um, I'll make this smaller in a second, but I have a standing order with niche website builders, 20,000 words of content per month. Plus I have a shotgun skyscraper campaign running currently. It's about three and a half months in. I have 22 links so far. The average domain rating is 59, which is higher than I expected, although it's fewer links than I was expecting, but it's more powerful links, so I'm not complaining about that at all. It works out to about $109 per link so far, and it was a brand new site in July, so pretty fresh site, and I got started right away. Um, Alex, I think you may be doing a little work with them. I don't know if you're in a yeah, position yeah, I'm to share with anything. Yeah, uh, Website Builders. I uh, had Adam on the channel just the other week. I know he's been doing some interviews with you as well. These guys are serious in terms of their experience with creating um, niche websites. In fact, they're doing their own case study at the moment where they're building a site. They're adding a million words of content um, in a very short time frame. They're experts when it comes to expired domains, which is something that I've not really done a lot of before. Um, they're also Welsh, which is a good thing. Um, well, at least one of them is. And um, yeah, they're doing a, a, a bit of skyscraper for my site, Best Roof Box. They've just shown me the piece of content that they've written, which is amazing it's going to be the best bit of content that i've got on the site um so their whole approach is to create a fantastic bit of content um that's so good that people just they, they can't resist linking to it basically they just can't resist linking because the content is that good so rather than the kind of approach that we're used to doing where we create guest posts and we have to you know do a lot of outreach and then create lots of guest posts and get a link that way the, these guys have a different approach where they create a fantastic bit of content for your site that just attracts the links because the content's so good. It's like magnetic. It's pretty awesome. Yep. So I'm going to hit some questions here and people can just keep adding them in. Alex will, Alex and I will chime in and uh, shout out. If I didn't say hello to you, it is my oversight here. Just the chat's moving fast today because 
we have a guest, so I'm going to need to have more guests on here. But I see Phil and Amelia are on. What's going on? And there was a question. Okay, so Eric said, what's the best ad network that's cannabis friendly? And I actually have no insight on that. Alex, do you have any at all? No, I I think most ad networks would be fine with that um, as long as you just tell them what your site's about. And I, I think, it, you know, a lot of these ad networks have the control like you mentioned so that the advertisers would be able to say that they don't want to advertise on a site like that. And then you should be fine because in the, the day, not so much here, but over <laughs> where you are, that's a, a growing industry, isn't it? And a growing market. And, you know, it's not such a controversial topic anymore, I don't think. I, don't, I think no. most ad networks would be fine with it. No, and, and to tie it back to <laughs> tie it back to um, shutdown and, and shelter in place and stay at home and all that. The I'm in Colorado, so marijuana weed is legal. I can go down to the store and like just it's so close I could walk to it, and uh, <laughs> they they will stay open like um, liquor stores, That's cannabis like places. Shop, yeah. Yeah, gun shops. I mean, all all the big hits. Like those places stay open because basically they don't want to run on those those kind of shops. So literally, <laughs> those places will stay open, and they did last time. So they are they are essential. It is essential yeah. to have those open. So all right, uh, Karen says, does anyone know how much traffic you need to add a second site to Ezoic? And I believe someone actually chimed in. Tortoise Cashflow said that they added a second site with less than a thousand visitors. And if you go through their their training, then you don't need any traffic on the second site. So, Alex, do you have any insight on that? I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I haven't been with it long enough. I think I think I've heard something to that effect. And pretty soon, I'll have um, one of my friends, Tyler, the CMO, over from uh, Ezoic to uh, hop on the channel. I need to give him a shout. He's been on the channel before, but I can have him answer questions since he actually knows the answers to these. So good question. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Next we have Harold. Do I have, or do you do anything special for your home and blog pages with SEO or Yoast SEO? So Alex, what's your take on that? Uh, no, I just would set the, you know, the usual stuff, page title. Um, the thing with home pages is they're not really the most imp- they are an important page but in terms of seo really the optimization happens on on the articles more than anything you'd, you'd probably just set your page title and your meta description obviously your page title would include your main keyword so for my website best roof box the page title is you know best roof box guides whatever because i'm targeting the keyword best roof box and it, it does pretty well but other than that I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about that a lot of people nowadays are ditching SEO plugins altogether, aren't they? So, yep, I, and I, I haven't used one in in quite a while, and I mean, really, like you said, if you could just rank for your brand name, hopefully, you know, you have a keyword in there, maybe. But if you don't, it's no big deal. So, if you could rank for your brand name, that's a good thing to do. Um, okay, moving on. Tortoise says um, your DA went from fifty nine uh, to fifty nine in four months. Actually, so that is not correct the domain rating of the links that i got from niche website builders was 59. my domain rating for my site is still i think it's five so it's okay. five right so now. you've not seen any any increase on that yet but that's going to take a little time isn't it yep and, and i haven't i'm interested to see how quickly it'll climb up the url rating the ur is actually like 25 at this point so it'll be interesting to see like when it comes through. Plus, um, the links that niche website builders are building, they're going to internal pages. They're not going to the home page. So it's kind of interesting how this is playing out. I do some other link building that uh, really is more associated with blog commenting and some other promotion in that area. So that's probably why it's moving up in the URL rating. But how far along are you in your uh, we haven't done any link building yet. So we've literally just got to the point where we're adding the content to the site on my site. So okay. um, I think they're, they're doing all the illustrations and stuff now because that's the other really good thing, you know, to make this content really special. Um, they don't use any stock photos or anything like that. They they create 
bespoke artwork and, and all sorts of things to make it just look fantastic. So we're, we're just at that point at the moment. But I think you've been using another company recently, haven't you? Um, is it Stan? Am I right there, Stan? Yep. It's uh, so I tested out Stan Ventures, um, yeah. Stan Ventures, and it's more of a it's more of a guest posting and link placement versus you know, like you said with the skyscraper campaign, you get a great piece of content and then it's link building to that great piece of content and uh, Stan Ventures, uh, they've done a pretty good job. Um, and it's, it's a big company out of India and they sort of have, uh, a, a, I think a couple team members maybe in the U S but it's mostly out of India. So you end up with, uh, you know, pretty reasonable guest posting link placements versus, um, some of the more expensive, Really, SEO I, think it's good to bring that. I mean, I've been talking to them as well, but I think they found me through you actually. Um, because the thing with niche website builders, they, they offer a fantastic service, but they are not cheap, are they? They're not cheap, they're, they're high end. Um, so yeah, I mean, Stan Winters was saying that they do quite a bit of work for the Hoff as well. So, and I've tried their links before, so you know, I'm, I'm interested to see. I think you need to have different options, especially for different sites, in terms of you know, how you're going to build your links. Yep, exactly. And I think um, I think you're right. They probably found you through through me because they <laughs> weren't really paying attention to my uh, YouTube channel, and I was like, "Yeah, you got to check out the YouTube channel." So then they started looking around a little bit. Um, and yeah, they're asked, doing some stuff for me on the wheelbarrow site, so which is a new site. So I'm going to be interested to see how how that turns out. And of course, every, everything that happens, I will share with with my channel. Very cool. Yeah, they like they deliver fast, and uh, you know one hard thing you probably see this as well, Alex, is when we get a service done, they know that it's us. So mm. I'm pretty sure we get the the best. You think get special workout. treatment? I I hope we do, but it, <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid that it makes it harder for us to tell like how they perform at scale. But yeah. I have worked with Stan Ventures like. Um, I didn't work with them for a while, but I did extensive work with them probably in like 2017, 2018, like, you know, many thousands of dollars of, you know, work with them. So, okay. all right. Um, Amin says, uh, how much time do you intend to keep the skyscraper campaign running? So basically ongoing. I'm going to probably keep this running for a while. So the way it works is usually the first month to six weeks, they write the content and publish it. You know, you could give your feedback and all that kind of stuff. During that first period of time, they also set up and warm up the email addresses. They get all the technical stuff in place. And then they start sending out a bunch of emails. So I didn't really see any links for the first, I would say six weeks or so. And then they started coming much faster. In the specific package that I have, I think they'll publish something new every quarter and then they'll do link building for that. They have other packages where they'll publish something like maybe, I can't remember how often, but say every four to six weeks. So you have like a lot more, a lot more link building happening and it's a lot more expensive, but on a per link basis, it's way cheaper than working with say the Hoth or even Stan Ventures, so. Yeah, I mean, it's all about quality, isn't it? I'm just talking about link building, do you, do any of your own outreach anymore or is that like you don't have the time for that because it is such a time consuming process isn't it only for niche site project in my own brand so you know working with like you or our other friends yeah. out there um but yeah it's just you know at some point it gets boring and it takes a lot of time and uh, frankly at this point i'm just like i don't really care that much i'd rather just outsource those sort of trivial um monotonous tasks so. Yeah, I mean, well, that's the that's the point where I think everyone wants to get to. Is it once you have a little bit of success and a bit of money to play with, then you can start outsourcing your writing and your link building and and all that stuff. But you know, when you're starting out, you do it all yourself. But I think that you need to do that, like with any business, you need to do it so that then you can then get other people to do it. You can't get other people to do a task that you've not done yourself. Yeah, and it makes it really hard to tell the quality or the amount of effort and you know, one, one thing, cause I started from, you know, not having any budget to do this. So I was doing almost all the work myself. You end up coming up with, you know, your own ideas, your own systems that you could maybe bring skills from your, 
your day job or your education or somewhere else where you come up with a new idea that's a little better than what other people are doing or put a system yeah. in place, for example. So very cool. Okay. So quick note, I'm just going to give a shout out to my own stuff really quick. There are some links in the uh, show notes. So I guess it's a description here on YouTube where you can check out some of my recent courses. So I put one out on Haro link building, which did fantastic. And I see a lot of people are actually executing on that. There's also a course called site growth plan, which you could have a look at, or if you're not interested in a course, that's fine. You could also sign up for my email list. You could just go to nichesiteproject.com, hit the green button, enter your name and email address, and I'll send you all my templates, including the KGR, the keyword golden ratio calculator. So sign up for that email list. All right, we have Ku says, when does the Google sandbox end with a new site? So a lot of people will say six to 12 months, roughly in that time frame. I actually have a video on that topic where I ask a couple people, so check it out. Alex, what's your experience with the sandbox? Yeah, it takes, just on my sites, it seems to take that long for the traffic to start coming. Um, I know this is like one of the biggest debates in our industry, and I see that Carl's just joined us in the chat, and I think Phil was in earlier. I know those two argue till the cows come home about this. Um, I'm not sure which side each one. I think Phil doesn't believe in the sandbox, and Carl does, so. I don't know, because you do hear that some new sites, they get traffic after a month or two. I mean, I don't know, maybe if you build enough authority links, that might help. But then if you do that too quickly, then that could look suspicious. I don't know. Generally, patience is the key in this game. <laughs> on the YouTube game, on the affiliate marketing game, it's just patience. Things don't happen as quickly as you'd, as you'd like or as you'd think. And you just have to be patient, keep working away, even if you don't see results instantly. And then just one day, things start to move. One key thing with all these questions is the definition of words. So when we say Google Sandbox, some people may interpret it as getting zero traffic and it's impossible to rank on Google, which is not true. You, you can rank in days if you go after some you know s smaller, mm. low competition keywords. So like I said, it's the definition of words and how you view it. So usually, right, the people that believe in the sandbox know that you can get some traffic if you go after low competition keywords, but they'll just see the growth increase a lot after six and or 12 months. So, and it turns out as long as you just get past that period, then it doesn't matter anymore. Like once you're past that point, then who cares if there's a sandbox? Yeah, and to be fair, if you're building up a site from scratch, it can take six months to actually build up a decent pool of content on your site and actually have a site that looks like it's established and, and finished. Because, you know, if you've only got 20 or 30 articles on your site, then you're not probably adding a lot of value and Google maybe doesn't want to show you those kind of sites. So it takes six months to, to add a decent amount of content and to, to tweak your design and get your layout right and your structure and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, just it just takes time to get to get to that point. But as you say, once you've done that and you have got some good content and you are a bit established, then it's just up and up and up, hopefully. Yeah, you could just publish stuff. So um, I, I almost forgot, Alex, I wanted to ask you about this hosting service that you, you put together. Is that something we can go into a little bit here? Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, again, Phil, who is in the chat right now, um, Phil has work, been working with me for quite some time now. Um, I can't remember how long, a good year or so, maybe two years. And I started moving a lot of my sites over to Phil. Uh, I've been using different hosting companies, but um, I, I host sites for a number of my clients, which is kind of a legacy thing from when I used to you know, be a consultant and, and make WordPress websites. So I wanted someone that I could just kind of outsource all of the hosting to. And Phil, his company called Spiderweb, has been doing that for me for quite some time. I then started recommending a few of my viewers um, to go check him out, which they did. And it's great because Phil uses um, like AWS servers and Google servers, I don't know, big servers anyway. So he's got presence around the world, delivers fantastic speed and all the usual stuff you'd expect with hosting. But the great thing about Phil is he's just there if you have a problem. And even if it's a WordPress problem, a plugin problem, 
PHP, you know, all that techie stuff. You can just drop Phil an email or a text message and, and he, he sorts it out. So I've now teamed up with Phil and we're actually offering that service to the world and it's available to buy from wpeagle.com. It's not a cheap service, um, but it's it's not supposed to be. <laughs> if you want a cheap hosting package, then go check out Host Armada or um, SiteGround, although SiteGround aren't as cheap as they used to be. Um, it's for people that have got maybe uh, a portfolio of sites and they want them to be looked after, be kept in safe hands, and just kind of have a server guy on their team so that you know they're all backed up regularly. If there's any technical issues, they can just, just call or just email. Um, everything is updated. And yeah, just kind of get rid of that that worry about hosting and about um, the kind of techie server side of, of having websites. So that's what we've got. We've got a couple of packages. We've got a standard hosting uh, package, which is your hosting, but you also get a little bit of management with that in terms of um, the basic stuff. And then we have got a hosting and a management package where basically Phil um, is your server guy and he'll just make sure that your WordPress is running do your updates if you've got any technical issues he'll help you and it's just you know a full managed um, service awesome and it sounds like people need to you know check out wp eagle and look for the service over there to get more information yeah, you'll Is find that... it across the top it's in, in the menu yeah okay very cool and, and yeah you... and so yeah that's that's what we're doing and it's, it's great awesome and can you give us i mean how, how has it been going from you know, like a sales perspective or a lot of people signing on? Was it higher or lower? And you don't have to answer, <laughs> it's I'm just a little curious. Bit slow. It's a little bit slow. We're still finding a few, maybe the price point, I don't know, we, we need to think about that. But um, it's early days. And the, the thing with hosting is a lot of people have committed to companies like SiteGround um, for two or three years because I told them that that was the best thing to do because you get the best value. <laughs> so, you know, if you're six months into a three year hosting contract, you're not going to just ditch it and uh, and move to us. So um, we've only had it out for a couple of months. So we're just waiting for people's renewals to come around and then, then we're, we're here for you. All right. Sounds good. And yeah, I mean, I think that is the thing you got to look out for when people are switching or they're like, okay, finally my contract's running out here but you know like you said it's not for beginners and most people are beginners like most, most people, people are, kind of are beginners yes. so yeah that, that's the thing i mean what do you do with your hosting nowadays because recently siteground for sure have put their prices up and um a lot of people got a big surprise when they got that renewal uh, email come through um because all the hosting companies do it you get this introductory price that looks fantastic and then in the very small print is the the renewal price so probably the best thing to do is like switch hosting every couple of years i guess but you know switching hosting is a bit of a pain isn't it that's the Such trouble a pain. yeah well i'm i'm actually starting a hosting company too to go in direct competition with you no cool. i'm just kidding i'm just kidding no <laughs> are you still with like a... or who are you using yeah so i have um siteground i have a few i probably have the most um accounts with them and then i have MDD hosting as well. It's a small company. Yeah, no, no, of, I, MDD. I, okay, yeah. So they do a good job, and I mean, they had a big um, outage a couple years ago, which you know, I was like, oh, maybe I'm going to switch. But it was one of those like multiple fail-safe issues that occurred, and they had everything backed up, but it just took like two days to restore it because of the huge amount of bandwidth that they had to transfer, and it was an offsite backup blah, blah, blah. It'll ne probably never happen again because I had such a catastrophic issue, but I have several accounts with MDD. They're not as big or as sexy um, as some of the bigger companies, but they have very good customer service and it's a little bit cheaper just in general for like the amount of resources that you're getting. Yeah. Well, maybe we could talk, maybe we can, me and Phil can, can sort something out. I, talking of hosting though, I I did a video just the other day. I've done a couple of videos on hosting because because of the site ground renewals, I wanted to look into some of the cheaper hosting companies and just see if there were some good site ground alternatives, uh, which there is. Like I just mentioned, Host Armada are very good. And I think if you use the code WP or 75, you'll get a discount there. That's an affiliate code. Um, and also I found a company called Cyberancy, which are offering hosting for free. Um, or their top package is like $3 a month, um, which is ridiculously cheap, really. Yeah. But yeah, I did a couple of videos where I tested these companies out. I installed a copy of one of my sites onto uh, five or six different companies. 
and tested out the speed, tested out how easy it was to get the site up and running. Uh, for example, Hostinga, which I'm sure you've heard of, um, I couldn't even get my site installed on those guys. Um, the backup plugin that I used to kind of duplicate my site just wouldn't work. Um, so they were kind of out straight away. And yeah, MDD actually did pretty well um, in my test. They were one of the companies that I tested. But I also did this other test for the tech support where I um, ticked the tick box of doom, as I like to call it, which is that tick box in WordPress that prevents search engines from indexing your site. And I ticked that box, and then I got in touch with each of the companies and said, hey, I'm getting this message from Google that my site can't be indexed. They're saying it's set to no index. What do you think it could be? And it was quite interesting, some of the responses I get. So, for example, SiteGround said, ah, OK, yeah, well, that's a, that's a WordPress thing, probably. So you should you should reach out and get a, get a professional web developer to help you with that. So that wasn't too impressive. MDD hosting came back straight away and said, yeah, you should probably check this setting in WordPress, which was fine. Um, host Armada, after about an hour or so on live chat, they did get to the, the, the bottom of it. But yeah, it was interesting. And, and then I know some people say that maybe you shouldn't um, test these hosting companies with WordPress problems because, you know, WordPress is separate. But I think the basic WordPress support is kind of expected now from hosting companies because a lot of them sell their hosting as WordPress hosting. So yeah, sure. that, that was quite fun. And um, I also... Recent after doing these videos, I had an email from my affiliate manager at SiteGround, who was quite shirty with me, actually saying, "Oh, well, you're not pushing SiteGround anymore," and I kind of explained why. And she came back and actually, and I also said about them hiding their live chat, which is what they've done. It's quite hard to find the contact area in SiteGround, and she came back and admitted that they have done that on purpose because they haven't got the en enough staff to deal with everyone, so to reduce the number of support inquiries they hid the live chat so with their renewals from SiteGround and everything else i've kind of gone off them a little bit i will say but um interesting hey. well, <laughs> i'm glad go. you mentioned that because I, 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 you know, I originally started with host um what they called host gator and um they were all good until till they weren't so yeah. you know you have to change your hosting maybe on a regular basis and, and hosting companies change before host um, gator i was using a company called tso host which are a UK-based um, hosting company, they were fantastic. But like all these companies, they got more popular, they got bigger, they got bigger, they got bought out by another company, and the service just, just declined. And yeah, you have to move on sometimes. Yep. I think you nailed it. I Same deal, same exact story with Bluehost for me. I, I was fine with them for years, and then the support really went downhill so in, in the fact i'm glad you you shared that with us on the uh, site ground hiding the chat because i've said oh you know it's great support you can almost always get in touch with someone but if they bury that while they're raising their rates it's like okay like they scaled yeah. and grew too quickly and they can't support the customers that they have so okay yeah and the way that they kind of go if you mention anything to do with wordpress they're like oh yeah not we're not touching wordpress go and get yourself a web developer yeah, that's really helpful. And like the hosting of guys with, I had the problem with the backup plugin. Um, they just said, oh, yeah, well, it's probably a problem with your plugin. So um, off you go. Where obviously it wasn't a problem with the plugin because it had worked fine on the previous five hosting companies that I just, just run it on. So, and, and the thing is, when you, if you're new to this business and it's your first website that you're setting up and you get knocked by something not working like this and then you don't get the support you need to, to move you forward, that could be the end of it. You could just, throw the towel in and say, oh, I'm not doing this, it's too hard. And um, I think that'd be a real shame to someone if they've they've taken that initial step to start building a website and they they fall at the first hurdle because of bad hosting or bad support. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty ple pleased with Host Armada, but I'm still gonna keep looking for some good hosts that are, are reasonably priced and um, and still you know offer good support. Because I think support is probably one of the main things when it comes to hosting. Yep, and just I mean, just goes to show the opportunity as well for maybe people that want to get started on YouTube or even start a blog. It seems like this hosting problem is solved, right? Like Alex and I have recommended different companies over the years, and then there's ups and downs, and we have to find other companies. So you can review, you literally probably, I think you mentioned one of your keywords, Alex, you know, site ground alternative. And there's probably yeah. 
Bluehost alternative. Like you can use these keywords, do videos. And I mean, you out, your video that you mentioned here, I didn't watch it, but that's fantastic. You did a real live test. You loaded yeah. sites. You gave them a little normal, very common issue that people see. And you're like, okay, well, I'm going to document and show exactly how they right. react. I've got a client, um, Phil knows, I mentioned it today. I've got a client, uh, I didn't actually build their website. Um, I just helped them. I added a WooCommerce booking system to it. They're a cleaning company and they clean student accommodation. So oh, God knows what they have to clean up. Like the, <laughs> when a student leaves university, they go in and like deep clean everything. God, you can't imagine what they find. But they needed a booking app on their site and I used WooCommerce and I did that. But they recently, um, not recently actually, it was back in February, maybe even before they... They took on a web developer to, to launch a new site with them and they wanted to keep my booking system, which is all fine. And, and Phil hosts the site for me. But I did a quick search for them today because I wanted to check out the site and I typed in their, their company name into Google and um, they weren't coming up. And I, I quickly had a quick look in their WordPress and yeah, again, it was the tick box of doom had been ticked. The, the web developer they used had launched the site, had not unticked the box and they have not been getting any search traffic, as I say, I think it was since February. Wow. Oops. Wow. It happens to us all. I've done it before as well. I noticed it a bit quicker. I think I had one client that didn't have any traffic for about a month <laughs> and I managed to kind of get around it. But I think they should maybe get rid of that box in WordPress. I think it causes more trouble than than it's worth. I think so too. I mean, there's there's other <laughs> ways to do it and make it a little bit harder to get to. Because I mean, people have good intentions when they do it, but it turns out. I mean, you should be so lucky if someone accidentally got to your site when you weren't ready for them to get. When to you were it. still I mean, building it, yeah. That's fantastic if if you're able to pull it off. So. Yeah, Kevin. Kevin has actually got a video idea there. Maybe um, you want to get on it first. We should do a video on how to contact SiteGround support. Yes. And show everyone where the live chat is. <laughs> and then make sure you get all your checks from them first and they don't owe you any money. So That is the other thing when it comes to recommending um, hosting companies. They all, you know, it's a very competitive market. They all offer very interesting um, remuneration to affiliates, don't they? And it's very easy as a YouTuber in this space to get tempted, you know, when these companies are saying, you know, we'll pay you $200 for each customer, that kind of thing. Yeah. Like hosting, they they offered me the the best affiliate rate, but I'm still not recommending them because they're not very good. So yeah, um, I think you know, and I think that's the key in all affiliate marketing. You've got to keep that integrity, however much someone is willing to pay you uh, in order to promote their stuff. You've still only got to promote stuff that you believe in and that you think's good. Otherwise, it's going to be a very short term <laughs> career. I think. Right. Well, and actually, this is a. I mean, these are like behind the scenes conversations, but one, and you, you don't have to answer this if you don't want to. So obviously you and I are on the, on the better side of the making money online area. And, you know, we talk about products that we use or, you know, that we don't like, we're very honest about it. And I'm, you know, getting to a point where I really don't want to, you know, be an affiliate for say a hosting company because I get these emails all the time, just like you do, or some software plugin or whatever. However, I also need to pay for uh, some of the things that I'm working on, right? So some yeah. of these projects, and it's it's like we have a platform, and I'm basically looking at running more ads. Like I used to not have any sponsors, but we have Ezoic and Niche Website Builders who, you know, I like both of those companies, but there's other, you know, link building companies, you know, Stan Ventures, one you mentioned before. And I'm like, you know what, if you, this is not what Stan Ventures did, by the way, but <laughs> now, now I'm looking. If there's anything I need to know about them, do let me know. You can talk I'll, about I'll, them. Off. Yeah, I'll talk to you off offline for that part. But, but basically, yeah. um, we have platforms and essentially I'm like, hey, you can run ads and it will be most likely on products that I haven't used. But I'm gonna say that I'm not I'm not the best um, spokesperson, but it's like part of my brand and what I do to just say, hey, I've never used this company. You should test them out. You know, they're sponsoring this show, blah, blah, blah. And it makes what we do possible, right? Because if we weren't making yeah. some money, then we wouldn't do the videos and no one would have the content anyway. So do, have yeah, you done any great. ads where you purely are just doing stuff for money? 
Um, I used to maybe more in the past. I'm, I'm now a, a bit more careful. As I say, I want to do this in the long term. And it, if I recommend stuff that isn't of a good quality, um, I mean, I've done it in the past. I have done it in the past, actually. I recommended a couple of um, writing companies, um, which in fact weren't paying me a particularly good commission. So I don't know why I did that, but they weren't very good. And I felt quite bad about it, really, because, <laughs> you know... My my community and my audience are very important to me, and I, I wouldn't want them to spend their hard-earned money on products and services that aren't very good. So now I am a bit more careful about what I do, and I always want to test stuff out quite thoroughly before I go about endorsing it and, and whatnot. Um, and yeah, so that's why I'm being honest about SiteGround. I, and I think it's fine to change your mind as well. Um, you know, I used to push HostGator quite a lot, and now I don't, and I'm very open about that I wouldn't recommend HostGator anymore. Uh, even though I do, do still earn some commission from somehow. But um, <laughs> yeah, and same with TSO Host and other companies. If they're no good anymore, then I'm just going to say it. And I think if I keep your integrity is probably more valuable than a, a thousand bucks or whatever here or there from, from other people just, just so they can get on your channel and, and speak to your audience. Sure, but I, I'm what, charging but more than that. So. One other point is, is the AdSense within YouTube. I get quite a few comments now from people saying, there's too many ads in your videos. And to be fair, I don't add any ads. Google add the mid rolls automatically. I know I know I could probably change them if I if I could be bothered, but um, mm -hmm. I'm probably gonna change it a bit more often because I, again, I don't want to annoy my audience too much um, by showing them ads every two minutes within a video. Right, right, right. Well, that's I think you know one thing that I I am gonna integrate. And thanks for mentioning that out. I mean, I think. You know, we learn as, as we're going through this because, like, it's the first time that we're having these opportunities. So I am going to probably test some of these ads or working with these companies via the ads, but I'll always get sample work done so that I mm. can say, all right, I'm getting this done. You can actually see the results. I'm going to make it sort of a public situation and you know they could take it or leave it and i'm not i mean luckily i don't i don't have to run the ads but i'm testing it out as another vehicle just because there's you know there's enough people paying attention where i have to explore these options or else i'll have no idea but yeah the integrity yeah. i mean because we we don't we don't have to have the ads on there so and, and interesting like how, how many what percentage of your videos are running like AdSense and, and running ads out there? I monetize all of my ads. Oh, sorry, all of my videos. Okay. I, I do monetize okay. them all. Um, I just, I've just been aware that I've had a few comments recently saying, God, there's too many ads. But then at the end of the day on YouTube, you can skip the ads. I think a lot of people understand that in order for YouTube to be YouTube as it is now, and you get all these fantastic things for free, you get all this great content for free. Um, you have to give up a little bit of your time for an ad or you can always get YouTube premium, of course, and then you wouldn't have any ads at all. Yeah, um, that's what I have. It's, order... it's super cheap, by the way. Yeah. Everyone. It's like yeah, $12. So if you don't like the ads, you get YouTube premium. But the content creators, um, they need to eat and feed their family as well. And that's through ads. And for example, on a platform like Twitch, um, you can't even skip the ads. You have to watch the ads. And most people are fine with that. And in fact, the thing I love about um, Twitch actually with their ads is they have a little message in the corner of the ad that says, by watching this ad, you are supporting whatever, whoever's, you know, supporting Doug by watching this ad. And I think people then think, okay, what's, what's the problem? I mean, because people send me super chats and things in my stream, so they're, they're happy to support me by your money. So if you don't have any money, then just 30 seconds of your time for an ad is enough to support me. Right. Very good. Well, and I've, um, you know, I sell a lot of my own products. So I've often, for a long time, I didn't monetize the channel at all for like two years. And then I think I haven't done in the numbers, but I would say it's probably like 20 to 30% of my videos are monetized. It could be a little bit off now that I'm running a lot more clips out there, but it is, um, you know, a way to help pay for a little bit of the work that has to be done an admin around the channel so yeah i mean it is work that's the thing a lot of it creative videos is not easy um well i i it still doesn't come that easy to me i still sometimes struggle to come up with ideas to motivate and then you got the filming and i know you outsource your editing i'm still editing myself so that takes time and yeah, yeah. gotta when, get paid um, somewhere otherwise everyone 
I was hungry. <laughs> yeah. And it's unsustainable if, if we can't make some money to do this stuff. So, mm. all right. And, and we're not complaining by the way, everyone, like we're so lucky to be able to do this and yeah, we yeah. are coming up on an hour. Alex, are you okay on time? You go for a few more minutes. I'm okay for a bit. Yeah. Okay. No, no, Just, we've, we've got quite a lively chat going. Oh yeah. 57 Let's, people uh, watching right now. Yeah, this is amazing. I need to have you on more often. This is about three times as many people as we'll normally. So let's blast through some questions here. We see um, lifestyle design says, how do you deal with ad blockers, UX perspective, and server side, client side, da, 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 da. Any, any thoughts on that? I've never really thought about it. Um, how do, you guys, how do you feel with UX perspective of those sites that detect ad blockers server side and serve up effectively those ad walls blocking content? I've never thought about it. If people want to run an ad blocker, that's fine. I'm not going to restrict them from looking at my content just because they are running an ad. And the sites that I'm running ads on, they're affiliate sites as well. So, you know, if they, I don't know if ad blockers block affiliate links as well. I mean, it's kind of a bigger question because there seems to be this move in terms of privacy. Um, you know, Apple are doing it with blocking the Facebook cookie and, and Facebook tracking. But the, the fact of the matter is that all of these services that we use all the time, Facebook and YouTube and, and the internet as a whole, Google, um, is all supported by ads, <laughs> I'm afraid. You know, none of us are paying to use Google or, or Facebook and we're, we're just paying with our eyeballs and I guess you, I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I understand that ads are a part of, of the internet and and to show me targeted ads is fine because, hey, at the end of the day, I might actually be interested in what you're advertising and I might buy it. Very good. So, yeah, yeah I don't know. But if, if people want to run ad blockers, they're probably, they were never going to click on an ad anyway. So yep. don't worry about it. I never even thought of it. So I would say don't worry about it unless, you know, that's something that's important to you. And then... Uh, Saeed asked this. I'm trying to find a place to put these these questions here. So, do you mind sharing the success and failure ratio of your niche sites? Um, for me, I don't have a specific um, ratio that I know of, but basically, if I've worked on something and actually tried, it's probably up near 90%. There's a lot of stuff that I started and then realized, hey, I don't have enough time or bandwidth to work on it, and then I'll just abandon it. So, what about you, Alex? It's difficult to say because a bit like you, I haven't focused my energy equally across all the different sites. Um, but from what I hear from other people, it can be 60, 70% success rate maybe. And interestingly, going back to a niche website builders, I know that they like to maybe, like on their project that they're doing, they're going to launch like 10 sites simultaneously and and then kind of just dump the ones that aren't aren't doing the, the hockey stick <laughs> growth that they, they like to see. Um, and I know Carl, who obviously is in the chat, who's also got a YouTube channel. He um, has had to dump sites in the past, sites that he's poured, you know, lots of blood, sweat and tears into um, just because you get to a point and it's just not moving as quickly as it probably should do. So failure is going to be part of this process and um, it's just part of it, isn't it? And because it's, it's impossible to pick the perfect niche um, from, the, from day one. Uh, a lot of internet marketing is trial and error. You try stuff and stuff works and stuff doesn't work. And that's just part of the process. And hopefully as you as you kind of go through your your career, you'll learn more about what works and what doesn't work. But yeah, there's gonna be a failure. But yeah, I don't think I could actually put a figure on it because I think it depends on, on lots of factors. Like many things, you really only need one project to work and then it'll probably exceed your expectations. So yeah. You only need one big win. That's really it. Yeah. So it's kind of like a bit like spread betting or whatever, isn't it? You you put your money on a, a little bit of money on everything and then hopefully something comes in. Oh, I right. think you've got a super sticker. Amazing. Oh, wow. Nice. I, I don't Two get pounds. many super chats here. So um, this is uh, fantastic. WPE legal. Shout out. You need a sound effect or something now. I always have the horn for when I get a super chat, you know. Oh, I think I, I have a... Pew, pew, a pew, 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 <laughs> pew. No, it needs good. to be better than that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's fair enough. Okay, um, we have Alex, or sorry, we have Harold asking you, Alex, does your hosting company use cPanel? So I think Phil has already answered that. No, it doesn't have a cPanel, um, mainly because cPanel recently changed the way they license their software, which I think is one of the reasons why a lot of hosting companies have put their prices up. So um, no, we don't have a cPanel. We're going to have our own control panel available soon. But the service that we're offering doesn't require a cPanel because if you need anything, you just drop us an email and within no time at all, we will do whatever it is you need doing. You don't need to worry yourself with getting into cPanel, setting up FTPs or whatever else you want to do in there. Just leave that to us. It's a managed service. So you concentrate doing whatever you're doing and we'll take care of all the server stuff and cPanel and all that techie stuff. Very good. Hey, it's there... not that good anyway. It looks like it was developed in the 90s and never been updated. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's interesting. It is so ubiquitous, but yeah, it's a little little bit of a mess. And do you have like a like a guide for, I know people could check out a little bit more on the pricing, but as far as like the amount of traffic that a person's site is getting and, and maybe that's your hosting solution is a good option or maybe amount of revenue that a site's pulling in? Um, it's for sites that are generating a reasonable, all the figures are on the site, so probably go and check them out. I'm just seeing if I can bring them up now. Okay. Um, but yeah, and also we're, we're happy to be flexible. So if you um, drop us a line and let us know the kind of numbers you're doing in terms of traffic, we can maybe adjust the price um, based on that. Um, we can scale it up or down depending on your requirements. Got it. Okay. And looking through, there's a lot, a lot of chat going on. This is fantastic. You bring, you bring a lot of people in. You yeah, they're all good people. people. It's amazing. Yep, and I promoted uh, Helen to a moderator because a lot of my my old moderators, they don't show up for live streams anymore. They've sort of okay. you know, moved on to better live streams or something like that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I promoted a couple of people because I do need some help out here. Um, well, yeah, last night I did a stream with – I had a special guest as well, and um, – we had a load of trolls come on, which wasn't very good. I, I still don't understand trolls. They're posting kind of inflammatory kind of stuff. Not not aimed at me. It was just stuff that they knew would spark a reaction, kind of racist and all kind of stuff. So you definitely need a moderator. And we got to a point where I actually had to turn on the slow chat feature because people were just kind of spamming the chat and it was just getting crazy. But hey... Now, now I see it as kind of a bit of a compliment. You're kind of making it when the trolls are coming in your stream, I think. Yeah, there was um, s sometime early on when I was doing live streams, um, I had, it was like every single one that I did, there would be like five or six people that would just destroy the chat. So at that point, yeah, I ended up making, yeah, maybe five or six people moderators and we really tried to stay on top of it. So pretty, pretty, I, I don't, I don't understand either. People have too much time. So. What is going on in their lives where their entertainment on an evening is to uh, just go and troll some live streams? And I think, I mean, I know they want to see you sort of melt down or get upset or something like that. But the funny part is I sometimes we're just so behind on the chat. Like I won't yeah. even see what they take wrote for five, up, yeah. 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's like. No, and if you've got good moderators, it was taken out pretty quick and I, I didn't even flinch. Yeah. Um, that's pretty funny. Okay, and Fantasy Cloud says um, WP Eagle owns a site which makes 30K. It says 30K on the title. So this is a symptom of two things. One, I'm a little bit lazy. So I just I had Alex on sometime previously <laughs> and I used the exact same title. I just recite Alex, you know what I'm talking about. When you do a live yeah. stream, you can just like redo the same, same uh, title, all the same details. So I did yeah. that. And... Um, I don't know how much your site's making right this second, but um, based on what you said earlier, it's making at least four figures a month. So that pushes you into the roughly valuation of $30,000, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So technically, it's, I was like, oh, this is probably still safe to make that bold claim, but <laughs> yeah, we're in good shape. Yep. All right. Oh, and a couple of people asked and answer that question. All right. Fantasy Cloud says, how many uh, niche sites do you own? Um, my last count, I think I've got about six, something like that. Um, a lot of them are a bit dormant. That's the problem. Um, 
I've, I've given a few away recently. That's a, that's one way to fill up your live stream. I think one night when I gave away a, um, a site, I think I had a, over 300 on the live stream. That was a hectic wow. check that night. But um, because I do a lot of tutorials where I create affiliate sites, so I create the site within the tutorial and then I just kind of leave it. So they're all earning, interestingly. Some of it only only enough to cover a few beers a month. But um, yeah, I'm thinking of going to revisit some of them. Some of them are not in a great niche. Um, but yeah. In terms of my main sites, I've probably got about three that are, are earning a reasonable amount of money. Okay. And how, how many sites are you running now? Uh, I always keep it pretty lean. So I usually say like less than six. Yeah, so... I think you, you lose focus if you get too many. I mean, fair enough. If you if you build up a site and it's it's earning well and doesn't need too much um, too much work, then you could start on another one. But I think, you know, a lot of people, once they get to a point with the site earning well, they then like to sell it and and get that lump sum to then you know invest into something new and and then give that that new site that that kind of push that it needs to get it going in the beginning because you need a bit of money if you want to really hit the ground running with the site you know so you can load it up with content quickly and and all that. Yeah, and you know, kind of, I alluded to it earlier. Just some of the activities around starting a niche that I've been doing this for a little while. It's just not as exciting to do some of these things, and people will notice. You know, I've been putting more time into YouTube or a podcast, and just spending more time creating courses because that is more interesting to me. There's more things for me to learn there, and you know, I still have some sites rolling. I just, you know, I sold a little bit, and then started some new ones that I didn't even intend on starting but just because we start things like, like you said, it's mm. just kind of in our nature. It's kind of fun to do, but at the same time it does get monotonous. And then I realize, Oh, maybe I, maybe I need to give one away. Like you mentioned now, yeah. how much content was on that site that you gave away? Um, so I gave away two sites, I think. Yeah. Okay, so I gave away one site, which was the site. I built a site on a stream on a Thursday afternoon. I built a site which was in the soil testing niche or niche. Um, I, I don't know how we stumbled across that niche. I think we were on Amazon. We found some soil testing kits, and we thought, okay, we'll go for that. The website is ismysoilgood.com. And then the next week, I then gave that site away. So it was a brand new site. It had, like, I think I'd maybe added three or four articles to it, and... It was all made up. It looked really nice. Had a logo, had a domain name. Gave it to a viewer, and that viewer has run with it actually. And they've added a lot more content. They've started generating some sales. I still talk to them. They still ask me for advice, and um, because they said, "Oh, you know, the maximum cost of like a soil testing kit is like fifty bucks. I need some other things." So, you know, they kind of were diversifying more into other gardening areas and and things like that. And so that was good. And the other one I gave away was. Boot Boutique, which was a very old site that I had, which was a Woo's own site. So it was just loaded up with boots from Amazon using the Amazon API. I didn't have a lot of content on it. And yeah, I haven't heard from the new owner on that one. I I, I think they're working on it. I mean, that was still earning. That would, that would still earn 500 maybe a year, especially over the winter period. It, you, it would sell some boots. Wow. So uh, from a Woo's own site, that was like one of the very first ones I did. So yeah, I might give away um, something. I mean, if you put giveaway in the title of your live stream, you will get loads more viewers. And you maybe that's how you get the trolls as well. <laughs> so last night I had a great guest on called Leo. I don't know if you're familiar with him or Lefter is, I think is his full name. He's got this fantastic tool where you dump a load of keywords into it. And it's got a, a lot of technology behind it. It scrapes Google, does all sorts of things. And it basically creates your silo structure for you. It can see um, how keywords are related and, and yeah, really powerful stuff. Um, so we gave away a few licenses for that as well last night. And I've started giving away some merch as well, which is always, always fun on the live stream. So WP Eagle mugs and t-shirts are often given away and no, it's a bit fun. of fun. And it also encourages people to stay towards the end, till the end of the stream, because I normally do it at the end. That's cool. Yeah. And I, I think, um, one thing that I may try because people have always said, Hey, you got to do a live site, but I like how you created a site basically live and then you just unloaded it the next week. So you don't have to yeah. 
put too much time. It sounds like you maybe just got the skeleton set up and maybe didn't even add any content. Yeah, I mean, there, there was like I think I added a few articles just to fill it out a bit, but yeah, sure. I might do that again. Actually, it was good fun. Um, well, Kevin I, said I was going to do it. Yeah, you should do it. <laughs> no, go ahead. Kevin. Quite wrecking although just don't worry if you mess up. I know that you like to be perfect and all that kind of stuff, but then you know if stuff goes wrong, which it will, don't worry about it. A lot of people like that because stuff goes wrong for them as well. It's just part of life, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, and I think. Um, that was actually one of my other talking points. I've, I have seen you do more live streams and actually show and, and teach things along the way. And you and I had talked about this before. And um, I just haven't had time yet to get into it. But I think one thing I may do is like do some of the keyword research ahead of time. So like do keyword research live, maybe get the site set up and then potentially give it away. Now for me, the big thing is like, to get people on the email list. So I don't just want them to watch. I want them to engage a little further. So do you have any ideas on how I can rope them in for that? Well, I you guess? could, in order to get them to enter the giveaway, you get them to join up to your list or whatever. I guess that would work. I just yeah. asked them to say to me in the chat, my email game is nowhere near as strong as yours. You send out some fantastic emails. I do read your emails. Um, yes. Something I need to probably work on. Um, <laughs> Yeah, running a giveaway through email would be would be great in order for people to enter. They should like opt into your list because that's the key with email, isn't it? You just need to to give something of value in exchange for that email address. And I I got it because I'm actually running a contest next week, so maybe we can talk about this um, once we stop the live. Which I think we're going to go just a few more minutes, folks. So get your last questions yeah. in. But basically, I am running a contest, and I have software to do it. And I just realized. There's a decent way to integrate the YouTube, um, like watch this specific video, subscribe, plus the email list. So that will be the second contest that I run. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to improve my contest game because I know it's a decent way to yeah. build an email list, build the engagement and all that stuff. So I'll get back it's to you. I'll let you well. know. And uh, talking to people building stuff live, I noticed that Ron, a common friend of ours, was building some sites on his live stream. His, his YouTube is blowing up at the moment. And I think yeah. I think he's Ezoic's favorite. He's been doing a bit of content with him. As of you, actually, you, you're talking of quizzes. You did a fantastic quiz with with Ron and Ezoic, didn't you? Yeah. I think you yeah. won. It, I, I did win. I did win. It, uh, yeah, Ezoic is great. I'm going to be doing um, some more work with them. I think starting next year, I'm not sure if we're going to start this year, but yeah, I think they're putting together some other cool stuff and I'm going to be working with them on on that as well so all right um all right let's blast through some questions here all about gaming says what is the ideal number of articles needed to post per month on a kgr based site so basically as much as you possibly can publish that that is the answer there yeah. the there's no you publish, ideal the more, you, the more traffic you'll get as simple as that yeah whatever your whatever the maximum is that you can do the more right. you do, the more you get. Yep. Then we got Kevin, his new site. Uh, hand to Kevin here. Um, 54 views this month and two sales. Nice. That's good. All right. And we're blasting through, blasting through. Oh, it was just one person that asked the same question like four times. So hopefully somebody kicked that person out. <laughs> it was in capital letters as well. Yeah, what a jackass. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, actually, I think we got through most of it and shout out to, you know, all the people in the chat asking all the great questions, Alex, people can find you of course on your YouTube channel and you pointed out a couple great videos anywhere else you want people to uh, hang out and check your stuff out. Yeah. Check out, um, WP Eagle. Yeah. So some of the videos that we just talked about you'll find them on there also check out my other channel it's just called alex cooper you'll find a link to it from wp eagle go check that out i mean i'm going to post more to that again i've, I've been inspired again to, to post on there um and yeah it's good to see all the regulars um there's quite a few i see in there like femi and justin and helen and phil and bradbury all regulars on my uh, streams and in my community good to see you thanks for the support justin is asking who is this ron fella who is this Ron Feller, Doug? 
Ron is uh, the one hour professor, Ron Stefanski. I've interviewed him, I think like three, four times. And he and I have been meeting sort of in a mastermind, just he and I for, I think almost a couple of years. And we kind of knew of each other back when we both got started around 2013 and 2014. And then, you know, never talked for years and then just sort of were working on the same things. And yeah, we've just been chatting for a while. So uh, yeah, yeah, Ron's he's a just good guy. YouTube. He's building up YouTube. Do check out his channel. Ron is, he's been on my channel as well. We had a, we had a good chat. Uh, Ron is slightly different to myself and Doug because he monetizes his sites purely through advertising. He's very content focused. He's, he's all about getting into a topic and just building up big sites full of lots of useful content and, uh, and, and monetizing purely from ads. I think he's doing a bit more affiliate now, but generally he gets most of his money from ads. He's had a bit of issue with um, Google um, AdSense. And yeah, I think he's recently over on his Eric as well, obviously. Uh, and, and he's doing well from that. But yeah, really interesting guy. Uh, comes across really well in his videos and definitely worth a watch. Yeah, check out his stuff for sure. And last couple questions. Alex, do you need to, to jet here? No, no, there's nothing going on. I'm just uh, okay. getting a little thirsty. There's no time for beer. Yeah, we'll, ju we'll just a answer these last couple here. So All About Gaming says you posted 28 articles on your site uh, starting on May 20th, or sorry, May of 2020. You started earning in September. The total orders um, are 470. It's earning 390. Is this good? The answer is, I don't know. That could be fantastic. The, the fact that you're you earning money. Good? Do you think yeah. it's good? I mean, it seems pretty good. Yeah. I mean, there's so many factors in there and I think you're just looking for a little validation. And the fact is you're getting traffic and you're earning money. So you're in good shape. I can give you a tip, which is you don't have to ask your question like eight times. So in the <laughs> chats, I'll just tell you, <laughs> I, yeah. I'm not as nice as Alex. Um, Alex is no, much I, I get than I. The thing is when you're streaming, you're often behind the chat. We've already spoke about this. So I think people think they're, you're going to get an instant answer, but yeah, there's a delay anyway, just because of the technology. But then, just because we spend you know a few minutes answering each question, we're going to fall behind. And and the quickest way to annoy someone when they're streaming is to spam the chat with caps locks on. I don't know yeah. what that is, but it just it's like it gets in, gets yeah. your back up quite quick. Yeah, yeah. So that that's a nice way to say it. And then we have. One last one, uh, how, how can you optimize, and I don't know how to pronounce your name, sir. How do you optimize the website or a website for the May 2021 Google update? The answer is we don't know. No one knows, but you could probably follow the Google Webmaster Guidelines and site quality metrics, so high quality content, and then promote your site in a normal way. That's about the key, the key thing. There is no trick to optimization. It's all about, and then today, Google just wants to serve people good quality content that answers whatever it is they're searching for. So in terms of SEO and optimization, the basics are you just got to make sure that your page title is, is good and correct and accurate, that your subheadings are good and correct and accurate, that your, your content is good and well-written and there's nothing really more to it. There's no no little tricks or anything like that. You just need to deliver good quality content for a good quality website, and then you, you should be fine. Yep. I mean, th there is obviously other technical things. You could maybe add schema and all that kind of stuff, but I think that's just like the sprinkles on top, really. It's not not the core of, of what it's all about. It's, it's all about just good content. And, you know, gone are the days, the good old days, some would say, where you could just, you know, spin some content or do some other rubbish and put some some terrible content up on your website that was been rewritten by a computer and, and actually get ranking at traffic those days are gone aren't they so oh, yeah. there's no tricks to it it's just delivering good quality content that answers the questions that people are typing into google indeed all right well everybody check out wp eagle and check out alex's vlog channel i'm a subscriber to that and it's more it's not as um sort of technical it's more it's just cool stuff, I would say. So it's check more, that out. Yeah, it's, it's talking about life and business and yeah, I don't really talk about affiliate marketing sites or anything like that. I just talk about it's kind of mindset and working for yourself and and just some of my things that I've learned and my experiences. That's all it's all about. It's just a bit of fun. Um, 
I was going to, I think I'm going to do some more fun videos. Like, for example, I want to do a video where I watch some of my own videos, but actually I just watch the ads that run before my own videos because some of the ads that I see, like um, John Cristani is running some at the moment, and they, they seem to appear quite a lot in front of my videos. He starts the video off and he's, he's throwing money at the camera and, uh, you know, got the money gun and he says, you know, quit college, quit your job. Uh, oh, so I might do a bit of commentary on those because... Just they give people like you and me a bad name, I think, those those guys. The guys with the money gun. Well, I have been watching some of the ads, and a lot of mine are just about male enhancement. So I'm not sure why you're seeing oh, those ads. What's that about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll end it here. Um, Thanks, Alex. You're the man. Just interested in one final thing on the, the money gun thing. I got approached by a company, and it, has, it hasn't arrived yet, but they were a company that create fake money. I got um, it. Hold on, I, I got it. Hold on. <laughs> it is. He's going to get some prank money. It's Are you, from. Did they get in touch with you too? Yep. And I was like, hey, I will. It looks pretty real, doesn't it? Yeah. Have you made a video on it yet? Um, I give him a shout out occasionally on these live streams. So, and I was going to have it just as some some thumbnails. Um, as well, just have like cash laying around, but um, it looks good. It feels good. It's called, um, and I, I, I think there's a link in the uh, in the description, but it's like Vice Props, ViceProps.com. Yeah, cool. one, yeah. And um, yeah, it's, they were like, "Hey, we're just a small company," and I was like, "Ah, shit, you know, just send it over." So um, here's me. I'm still waiting on mine. I'm still waiting on mine because so that's all these gurus that are just like sitting at their desk with piles of money around them. They've, they're vice props. They've been to vice props. Yeah. It, I mean, it looks really good. And it does say, sorry, it takes a second to focus here, but it says motion picture purposes only. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then the back. You, you haven't um, tried it up the store yet, no? <laughs> that would be that would be my final video, you know. Well, <laughs> the thing, thing is, no one takes cash anymore, do they? No one wants cash. It's all contactless payment and all that. Oh, you yeah, do have contact right. over there, don't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got it we got you it. were a little bit behind on the on the electronic payments i seem to remember but... <laughs> all right good. all, all right, right we're out of here folks have a good day out there yeah thank you all thanks